Uh, officially, good morning. Welcome to the Market Watch Group Weekly Market Prep. I am Scott. I will be your host. These are our disclaimers. We are not brokers. We are not advisors. This is for education and illustrative purposes only. We don't give advice or recommendations. Our agenda, market posture. Okay, so I'm excited. My estimation, and if anyone did theirs, don't don't spoil it. But my estimation was on Friday anywhere from a, a point seven five upwards of a one point two five increase in the posture. I mean, we had a great week, yeah. If I feel like Bob Rowland says I was on circle, and I'm sorry, Bob Rowland. One more day, and then it's and then it's a it's that's my fault. I was going in there. Oh, I apologize. That's that's a hundred percent on me. No, you know what? Glenn's not here, right? Yeah, Glenn did it, you guys. <laughs> Glenn was supposed to tell you. Um, um, Glenn was supposed to tell you that we weren't starting until tomorrow and he was supposed to cancel that meeting. I don't know why not. I'll ask him why he, he didn't do it. <laughs> That's I apologize on his behalf. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was me. Um, but we are starting tomorrow. We'll be on both. We'll be on both for a week. Yes, Bob, the, um, the downloads will all be there. That's one more thing. I have a couple of more things that I'm getting put into place and then I'll start putting like pictures and it'll look pretty. So, um, so structurally I have a couple of big, like, you know, uh, we're going to build a beginner course. That's like when, and, and I'm going to want your guys' help with that. When somebody comes in, what's the first thing they should do? And then the second thing, and then the third thing. So that if, if you, if, if you think back and you're like, I would have been a lot better. Off. I love where I am now. I could have got here way sooner. That's of course. Let's assume that's true. Um, both points. Let's assume both points are true. If not, we have work to do. But at least one point. But if you like where you are, and you could have got. If you could have gotten more comfortable sooner, if you could have gotten acclimated sooner, um, that's what I'm looking for. So that I can kind of handhold when someone first comes in. Bing, and they pop into this new world, which it should be a, a much cleaner world, right? We all agree that it's it's cleaner and find, easier to find. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I've got this. We can talk to each other easier. You can go through the courses and see what you've done and find everything. Where's all my downloads? Where's all my links? Where's all this? And that's all in one place. <clears throat> and so, but still, there's a lot. It's a lot. It's like, oh, I've got recordings coming i've got alerts coming i've got some chats over here i've got some courses over there like i hope it feels like there's a lot there and so uh, how do we make it not feel overwhelming um that's the seed be thinking about that okay um we're going to talk about the calendar sector searching watch list maintenance all of this this is what we're doing let's go do it um i'm excited because oh, of course uh is it going to give me charts i checked my settings oh i think i think i might actually be good hold on oh yeah we're okay i was like i just checked my connection but here we go let's get started as i was saying <clears throat> i was estimating I was estimating uh, 0.75, upwards of 1.25. That's what I think we might get. So let's talk about what that means because I want to go back a year. Right? And you can see back here, we dropped from four and a quarter, and that was a double dip drop. Before that, we were at like 5.5, 5.75, and then we dropped, and then we came back a little bit. And then we dropped again. And that was when? October. <clears throat> we dropped all the way to negative. Right? Does that mean we were bearish at that time? Not even close. Not even close. We still traded. Not a lot. But we still talked about at least a couple of pieces of the very first recovery bounce. There are people here 
who were then there. And then what? And then we got November, a quick recovery, and that was it. By the by, this time by by November nineteenth, a week from now, that, that was it. And then we got to the sixes and the sevens, and we were there all the way until April. Great, great market. Great market. And now what do we have? First, we have less. We had a we had a little dip. We had a little correction, right? But it never took us below a two. That was back in August. It was more of a late summer correction. We had the same thing last year, but we had a little bit of a dip and then a double dip and then it was a we had it all at once and then what? And then we recovered and then we're like, well, what about October? Well, here was October. Here in October, our score dropped from a five point five. To a 4.75. We dropped 0.75. And what did we do? We still were taking bullish trades. At, at every opportunity that presented itself. On strong stocks that maintained strength. And ultimately what happened? A good, a good October. Flat for the market. Positive for us. I hope. I hope. And now what? And now as we move into November. What a great start. Phenomenal start. Willing to trade what? Willing to trade in the election because we're bullish. Because the market posture is bullish. I would have been way less. If I was a one or a two, I would have been like, yeah, I'm probably going to just sit this one out. <laughs> right? <clears throat> and so, you know, this is, uh, this is important context. Why? Because right now, what do we have? We have certainty in our election with a, with a market positive response. Whatever happens, who knows? We'll see. But right now, all that matters is perception. We have a accommodative Fed. And we all know, don't fight the Fed. Um, we have inflation <clears throat> already down. Prices aren't back down yet. But inflation's already back down. To 2.2, 2.4%. We already are in a situation where GDP is faster than inflation. Let's let's agree that, that at least the new administration is being handed a pretty favorable economy. We can all agree that immigration and the border is in a, an absolute disarray. But the economy is actually those of us who know what's going on and see it from a market perspective. Things look great. Um, I, I feel like the trading landscape is very nice. And I think that we are now going to see that here. So I am excited um, to talk about it today did anybody do theirs in advance and if so are we on track let's just start here long term now here's what's interesting i uh, i said this i said this even if we get back in i'm not gonna raise my score um fair enough press i get that um i get that there are certainly, and there's also uh, uh, pockets of, of, you know, what the regular Joes see here and there. I agree with that. Interestingly, interestingly, I actually feel like Trump would be the right person for what I believe would be some uh, productive quasi nationalization laws in our real estate that significantly limits foreign investment into residential real estate right um i i i think that i don't know um i don't know what the uh, the policy on that is as far as like parties but 
I think about my kids being unable to afford houses and it's like there's a lot of like Chinese investment money buying up houses and then renting them and it that's that's a problem. I don't but no one really talks about that. I don't know. Has anyone heard that discussed as a in a political environment? I would like to see that addressed. That's a that's a productive like let's help mm, I don't know. <clears throat> Investments close to military base. Yeah, that'd be important for sure. Farm, amen. Farmland for sure. For sure, we should not let, that's our food supply. That's a, right? I didn't even think about that, Clint. Honestly, it should be like, that's where there should be a, you know, nationalization. Like, not like the the government owns it, but the government limits like what foreign investments. Anyways, we're going to get distracted on that. I love that though. I could, I would support that wholeheartedly. Um, so I talked about only raising this if it's back halfway up and it's not quite halfway. So I'm leaving mine at 1.25. It's got to go a little higher this week. And then, oh, geez. Are you kidding me, Bob Roland? Look at that. Um, my, at the new year. I'm upgrading to 27 month, 27s. I'm on 22s. I'm going to upgrade to 27s. I'm going to mount them on my wall instead of like to the desk. I'm I'm get, I'm doing like a aim press is right. I'm doing like a new de, a new office redo. I'm very excited. <laughs> very excited about it. Okay. I'm leaving my posture. I'm leaving mine alone on the on the weekly. I could see if you guys, those are 27s. I like that size. I looked at 30s and 32s. And I'm like, no, it's too much. I'm looking around the screen too much. 27 is to me as big as I would go with the monitor. And then it's just like, for me, it's like, oh, then you it's kind of wasteful. You can't even find anything what you want on the monitor itself. Love it. Magical. Uh, I'm going to go to the six month daily. I'm also not going to change my score here because you'll notice that if I were to, oh gosh, look what I did. I have a new drawing tool. It's not new. It's the old one, but it's not breaking. So I'm like, okay, why not? I needed a drawing tool. I looked around. <coughs> 3K, that's not bad. Oh, there you are, drawing tool. This is right now the trend I am measuring. That's my short-term score for right now. So all we did last week, I didn't change it because we were at the bottom of it. And this week, I'm not changing it because we're at the top of it. That's a steady 1.75 for me. Let me know what you think about that. Um, quickly going back. Oh, it's better to be able to draw. Uh, here, what I mean is I'm going from this to this and I'm taking the halfway point, right? And I'm saying we're not quite there because we've been missing. We got to the green line. And then we didn't get to it. And then we didn't get anywhere near it. And it's like, we did get past this, but I need more. And then, and then, um, if we can get up into this area a little bit closer, I'll give it that, I'll give it that quarter point back. I'm going to be a little reserved for now. If you raised yours, I get it. We did again. We popped right back in. We popped right back in. Here's where I think we're going to see an interesting one. Let's go to, so I haven't changed mine yet. And you're like, how are you going to see your score go up 0.75 or even 1.25, Scott? How is that possible? Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, let's go here. Because... I've got one. Two. 
two. Three, three new above average volume days. And they were one, two, three. Ooh. Well, that was a um how can I not argue the slope of short term? I'm not sure what you mean by that. You think that it's a you think it's a stronger slope than a 1.75? <clears throat> uh that's the slope of the short term. Right there. That's what I'm measuring. I'm going to change colors and I'm going to I'm going to say what I think you're measuring. You're measuring that and and you're measuring that angle. Yeah? And and that is that's just a swing. Right? That's just one swing. This is a swing. This is a swing. This is a swing. This is a swing. And when I put those all together, they equal the trend. And that's what I'm measuring. So it's okay if you want to put more emphasis, but you're measuring and, and you're assessing a swing, a one, one swing of momentum, right? But I'm I'm looking that I want to assess this this trend here. So that trend is the 1.75, right? I've seen way stronger than that. Where, where we're, we're like, like uh, we're, we're going, going like this, this and, and it's, it's like, like, oh, that is steeper. That is a 2.25 or a 2.5, right? Those that's the difference. That does that make sense? So I don't I don't think we're arguing because. I'm not arguing that this little piece here is not steep. What I'm saying is my score is not really influenced by that. My score is only the, the broader short-term trend, right? Uh, okay, so volume now has just shifted dramatically. We now have one cell that's starting to get stale. Then we've got overall we've got three we've got three sellers, one tie, four buyers. And all I mean that alone. If we were if we were three to three, I would give it a point two five. Let's just start with that. Because right now the argument is for me, the argument is are we scoring at a 0.25 or a 0.5? Do you agree? Let's just start with that premise. I don't I don't think there's any like discussion of um uh you see you see four sellers? Uh do you mean this one here? You uh, you you went you you went red. You didn't analyze the candle. You just analyzed the color. Does that make sense? Red does not mean sellers. Red means that. Red means that. So let's focus on this day for just a second and get this point. This is the open on that day. That open. That open means the buyers open the day. Why do I say that? Because this is the close of the prior day. When we say the market is up or down for the day, it's relative to the prior day, not relative to the morning. When we say it's up, we don't mean it's up from its morning price. We mean it's up from yesterday's close. We have to make sure we orient around a consistent reference point. What is the reference point? Yesterday's close. The candle's color orients around 
today's open. That's why our analysis is not based on the color of the candle. Does that make sense? Because let's continue to play this out. The buyers opened the market. You're talking about giving that to the sellers. You're like, that's a seller's candle. But listen to the context. The buyers opened the market. They gapped it up. Right? They gapped it up. And if you look at me, this is where Miguel's Miguel's uh, code comes in handy. Last week, it was a tie. So if you missed it, if you have a seller's last week, I'm going to say that you misassessed it last week. Because the buyers pushed it all the way up to here. A lot of that volume is the gap up. And the buyers pushing it up to here. And then what? And then the sellers pushed it back down. Where did they push it down to? Exactly where it was the day before. Exactly where it was the day before. Even though it's a red candle, if you looked at it for the day, you would say, how did the market do? And you would say it was flat. We were, we were flat. So the sellers did not win the day. The buyers started the day. Then the sellers countered them. And what happened? If you're watching a tug of war, they, they let them have an initial tug right at the beginning. And when they did that, it actually surged away from the middle towards the buyers. And then the buyers pulled it throughout and then it got further. And then all of a sudden the sellers pulled it all the way back. But where did it end? Right at the middle. They don't get the day if it ends in the middle. They have to pull it to their side and they didn't. Does that make sense? That's why this day, because it at the same point. Um, now, here I have buyers because it went from here to here. That's up. Even though it's a red candle, they tried to get it up to here. So the only thing the sellers do was not let them get there. But I gave that to the buyers, which ended up being correct because that opened the door. Right? Does that make sense? This is a this is a good discussion. Let me know if you guys see what I'm saying on this one. Um Yes, Miguel says. Steven, here's the good thing. It's all recorded. It's all recorded, but better than that, how you know is the Miguel indicator. The, I'm calling it the Miguel volume indicator. When Miguel's gone from the group, he'll probably never leave the group at this point. But if he ever did, people would be like, what do you mean the Miguel volume indicator? <laughs> it's it's a good marking, so we know. And, and it just sits there and keeps a, a, a tally for us. So that was an interesting shift right there, right? Um, it makes sense. Didn't see Steven, you, you, you sparked the right discussion. Candles are an interesting thing. Here's what I'll tell you. If you even change from one chart to another, you have to be careful because you can set these up so that they, they mark differently. What turns it white or red or when, it can you have to just kind of be like well what does it mean what's the implication here's our sanity so let's get back to it so this is getting a little old so i'm i'm going to kind of give this like a a a 2 4 and 1 that's that's where i'm kind of leaning to see this as and what I believe that does is it kind of recognizes that this one's a little stale and this is the absolute freshest data we have, <laughs> right? Um, when you call it old, is there a time frame? Um, the time frame is what we're on. It's dictated. Um, it, it's It's dictated by... A one month chart. This is a one month daily chart, not a 30 day, 
a one month daily chart, which is about 22 days. And anything in the last week, we start to think mm, it's 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 going to fall off during the course of next week. So we, we think it's it's relevance. Bob says lost move two, four and one. I go with sellers first. And then buyers. And then ties like a record. <laughs> Um, I guess we could do it the other way around, but I like to I like to set, put the sellers first, sellers, buyers, and then ties. Right. So in this situation, we had two sellers, one tie, four buys, and the fact that we're kicking this one off is because we have really fresh buys and starting to get stale. It just sort of allows me to put this. Okay. So now at this point, what's my score? Uh, I'm going to put that as a 0. 0.5. If it was if it was like a 2 to 2, I would give it a 0. 0.25. Like this is a, this is pretty strong right here. I even was thinking it could even go to a 0. 0.75. I'm putting at a 0. 0.5. Remember, this is on a 1 point scale. 1 point scale. This is our starting point. This is our ending point. We have a nice upslope. So yeah, that's that's my that's where I'm at. This is definitely a place where you'll see individual differences, and that's okay. But this is a huge jump. That's a 0.75 jump. So if you're like, how are you gonna get that? Bam, there's the starting point right there. Now, let's go back. What do I want to what do I want to highlight? Here here we are back in October. When we turn, where do we expect it to turn first and fastest? Back here it was the trend. We broke the trend then the volume and uh, we had a big play on the VIX. This time, the trend never broke. So it's, it's interesting, right? The trend never broke. So what's giving us some kind of an, an, an indication that this market is possibly breaking into something even stronger? It's this volume. That's, that's significant to me right there. That's big. Um, we had a pretty decent score already, but it's like, what, when we talked about this, what would it take to kick us back into the sixes? Well, how about a, how about breakout volume with a, uh, uh, certain election and a peaceful transfer of power? Love it. Okay. Sector rotation. So that was a great discussion. Are we all on the same page? Did anyone have any other questions? This is important because if, if we're saying we're the market watch group and we're watching the market and we're, we're looking for subtle things that don't just sort of, right? Like if, if, if you're looking at, if you're looking for the news to give you, you know, market information that's tradable, you're too late. Everybody has that information. Everybody's had it for a while. Right. The things that we talk about, we want to see in the news two or three weeks later, like, oh, look, oh, they're starting to talk about it, too. Um, so this is where, you know, first and foremost, in November, a lot of people started to get the jitters and we didn't. We're like, hey, we're still a four point seven five. Whatever else we maintained, we still took bullish trades. Um, uh, on that doji. There is a discrepancy from what Trade Station had. Is that is TS Trade Station? Think or swim? Okay. Well, here's a question, Stephen. What was your final score? What was everybody's final score? 
right? We we had some good discussion about like the the internals, but at the end of the day, it's like what's the analysis? <laughs> That's what's important, right? We don't want to get bogged down in the minutia. We we ultimately want to make sure we're getting to the, an analysis as we continue to refine that analysis. Great, but what's the score? Um, no, no. What was your volume score for today? Volume score for today. Okay, let's go to sector rotation, and let's see what we. No, no. Sorry, major market. I got to speed up a little now. We got a little sidetracked on volume. Okay, your so your volume was only a point two five, but you're a six point seven five overall. That's a that's okay. I am definitely anxious to see it on Monday. Okay, what do we have on the 200 day? Uh, very bullish with the NASDAQ on top. Then we've got the Russell and the S&P. Remember what we talked about? We talked about when that Russell moves into third or into a second position. I said one of the things we're going to be watching is Who's getting, who's getting the growth? Um, who's getting the growth? Dow or, right, large caps or small caps? Clearly the small caps. I think this could raise my score uh, a quarter of a point, actually, as I look at it now. That's a huge surge. Let's go to 133. And there it is, moving into that second position right there. Very nice. The Dow lagging behind. Let's go down to the 66 day. And there it is, moving into that third position there. Ooh, so I see Stephen's making the argument for the one. That's, uh, that's not a bad argument to be made, actually. That is on all three time frames with one fell swoop. All three time frames, one fell swoop. And now what? Russell at the top like a boss. Like a boss. I don't disagree with Bob. Not Bob. I don't disagree with Steven. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good call. That's a, that's a, just, I'm going to go to a one as well. It moved right into that position. Um... Small caps just stomped right in. You can see how long we've had the, the Dow and the Russell back and forth, back and forth. That's a leadership move for sure. Multiple time frames at the top on the 22. Anybody have a concern with a one score there? Let me know. So I might have, I, I said, I said between a 0.75 and a 1.25, and I think I undersold it. Because that VIX is definitely going to get a, a quarter of a point. I think we're going to, that's where I'm going to be at. Um, very cool. This is why I was excited about it. What does that mean? Well, our, our general core philosophy and what everybody's general core philosophy should be. And this orients itself around the premise that everybody's a genius in a bull market. Well, I want to be that genius. But in order for that to work, we've got to be able to say, is it that bull market? Here we're saying yes. So now what? Find a bull market. Buy the dips. That's that's the my trading book. Chapter one, find a bull market. Chapter two, buy the dips. Then what? Well, we know in this market, we give more grace we don't take losses lightly. If it hiccups, we give it a hiccup. We know that we're looking to get, and the reason we can do that is because we're looking to get more chips on the table. When you look at your risk management plan, you should be at the high end of your risk parameters. Whatever your portfolio risk is, you should be at the top when we, when we you, with this move, right? It's opening the door. Not prior. At 475, you weren't like, I've got everything on the table. But as you're like, okay, we're moving out of this 
consolidative October that just sort of went sideways and never really showed much weakness into this surge of strength. This is where we're ready to move chips and move and play and trade more. Yeah, um, that's kind of the point. Okay, let's go do the VIX and then let's go to the watch lists and then we'll talk about the trading plan. We don't have much time left in the year. Okay. Okay. Let me open this back up. And let's get to the VIX. I was excited for a reason. We're down to 15. What happens when we're back down at 15? Uh, I'm willing to do some some uh, calendar spreads again. If any of you remember, <laughs> it's beautiful, right, Press? I mean, this is so oh, good. We love, we just wait. We've been patient. It was as the uh, the election and some things were straining, but we never but we never broke 23. The VIX did its job, I feel like, right? The VIX did its job. Um, it never broke 23 and now we're all the way back down here at the bottom of this thing here, which means what, which means when we do bounce and I do think we'll bounce soon, we're, we're unlikely to get, and it's not like I expect it to stay below 17. And if it fills this gap, I'm like, Oh, it's filling the gap. I don't care. The gap's not important. This low and this 50 is important. I know 18 is not a big deal. Um, explain calendar spreads again for me, please. Why now with low VIX? Because they are a Vega positive strategy, like buying calls or puts Vega positive, which means that they do better when implied volatility expands. And if they do better when implied volatility expands, then the inverse of that is they do worse if implied volatility contracts. Well, if we, if we want something that's going to do well when it expands, then we want our starting point to be low, right? Which is the same thing with why would I sell something? Because the implied volatility is high. It's expensive, which basically means calendar spreads work well when options are cheap. With the VIX low, options are cheap. The cheapest of the, this is the cheapest they've been since August. And, as, and that's as cheap as they've been for a while. So that's, that's the significance. Um... I don't know if you were around, I think you were pressed for some of those calendar spreads, but they're a neutral trade, right? They're not a directional trade. They're a great trade that we can put on when markets hit highs and they can just kind of sit there for a little bit and generate some time premiums. Also, also, <laughs> let me, uh, let me show you something else. Also. If you go in, is everybody here today in the new community? Because this is what it looks like. It's a magical place. And in this magical place, you have learning and resources. And in this learning and resources, you have options foundations. Bing. And when you click on it, you go here. And when you click, when you do it, it'll look different than this. This is my version. Yours will look like this. Welcome. And it'll say your name because it's very friendly. And you can, this is autonomous. You don't have to go step by step. Obviously, we don't, this is your deal. But time spread, that's the breakdown. Beginning options, spread trading, time spread trading, advanced options. So in the options foundations course, you have time spreads, which lays the foundation, and then you have calendar spreads. So press, you could be like, you know what? I want to go in here. Bam, there's the video. You don't have to go find some document with a link and blah, 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 blah. It's all right here. <laughs> it's like it's like I asked press to set it up like that. Thank you, press. Um, how do we log into circle? I'm going to put the same. It's, it's higher up. I'm just going to scroll up and grab it. 
Um, copy text. Let me come back down, and you can you'll be in the, you'll be in in ten minutes. Bam! Right there, PJ. Click on that. Jump in here. Join the party. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so fun today, right? Market's good. The community's like this, this disc or this. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to put, put it down. Discord. <laughs> Next week, both will be running. And then the week after, there's just going to be signs on Discord that say, nobody's here. Go to, go to circle. And then, and then it'll just vanish. We're going to close it all out and. Yeah, awesome. Um, so everything, let me go back real quickly. Everything is in here except, to Clint's point, except, I think it was Clint. You are now, you are pre-born, I don't know what that means. Okay, so one thing that's missing here. So we have all the links, you can find them down here. So like major market, sector rotation. So if you're ever just like, hey, I want to find something or they're here as well, the downloads. All I have right now in the downloads is, I'm going to have all of our downloads in here. I got to put them in. I was playing around. I don't like that. It doesn't look like trading. It looks medical for some reason to me. I don't like that chart. Final market posture. Um, sorry, I'm so distracted today. Um, first of all, calendar spreads final market posture thank you bob is um so we broke the low we have a lower low but it's all the same lower low so god i kind of feel like that's big enough to give it a, a quarter a half of a point though Back to 15. I mean, that was a smash down. That's a crash up on the VIX. So I think if I go to 125 and then a lower high would put me to a 1.5 and then a lower low, 1.75, and I'm at my lowest point, and then I grab. Yeah, I think this is a tough one. I'm at least a one. And you could make the argument for a 1.25. I'm going to put it as a one. I think you could. Um, I think you could give that like, I don't think there's any need to. It's That's a huge jump. I'm a, I'm a, that's a one and a half point. I'm a six, two, five. Steven's a six, seven, five. Where's everybody else? Are you above me, below me, with me? Anybody still in the fives? Anybody hit seven? It's already a big jump. Press, I agree. Um, if, if you said 1.25, I, I could see that. Honestly, I could see I could see six seven five easily. So Steven being at a six seven five, phew, absolutely. Uh, if you were a little slower, maybe you were a little slower on volume. Uh, maybe you're still in the fives. Maybe. Still following? Got it. Six, uh, six, two, five for Gray Lynn, six, five for Sandy. Yeah, it feels like we're all kind of in the same place. Like the sixes in the sixes feels right. <laughs> that's that feels that that that's what's right, I think, for this market. Let's go take a look at our uh, oh, uh, also every Sunday now we'll be able to put in a poll, and in the poll, you'll be able to put your score, and then I'll be able to grab those scores. And then quickly average them and I will put out a composite score, two decimals. So it'll be like 6.32 or whatever it is. Super fast and easy. Also courtesy of Circle. Oh, fancy. You know I'm fancy, Miguel. <laughs> fancy as can be. Mm -hmm. mm. Love it. Let's hit this watch list. I think we're going to want to expand the watch list. Uh, I think we're going to want to expand across all sectors, actually. 
That's my that's my target. We'll do. I'll still do my trading minute. I forgot to I, I forgot to do that. Actually, I don't think I need to do it on Sundays. It's not a trading day. Um, I'll only do it Monday through Friday. Uh, but I think I'm gonna. I think we should run a search of all five gro- um, growth sectors and expand the watch list because let's let's make sure we're ready. I'm still in Apple. Let me know if you are. I'm, I'm about holding things now, you know. Um, Aflac, I think, is setting up. Uh, financials. So this one broke. New high. My my zone is anywhere in here for this thing to turn. I'm ignoring this for now. I would expect this to actually pull back, but I don't see this as being a trade yet. There's better things. Uh, overextended in Amazon. Nothing there. APO. So uh, uh, this is the pattern we're starting to see in financials. The flag. Expect to see the flag now, right? Oh, app loving, you app loving fool. Smashing. Look at that. You thought the earnings were good and then it just went on another tear. That is phenomenal. What do we have in AXP? Oh, I don't know. So I took the last of mine. Did anybody end up holding theirs? Got to the end. I can't believe it got to the target. Um, that's an older one right there. Uh, BAC. So, uh, right, maybe you're still holding a piece of something in the financials. I, I feel like it's just kind of like grinding out now. It made its move. We're now looking to see what kind of a consolidation will come. But if you're still holding, great. You know, just be willing to think how much risk am I willing to take based on how much more do I think it might have. Uh, Bank New York Mellon, same thing, right? So first and foremost, I'm looking for opportunities in financials on these pullbacks this next week. BX, not really pulling back yet. Um... Okay, industrials. New high, pulling back, opportunity. CMG still kind of pushing higher. Uh, coherent, new high, got to wait for a pullback. Waiting for, so you can see a lot of that is, is we, we, we're overextended on a lot of things. They're hitting these highs. We've got to be patient for some pullbacks. Uh, I want to see them. Here's one that's a possibility. Did anybody think about that? That might now be into more of a continuation style trade. Fast was magic, right? Loved fast. <laughs> it was a good one. It was a good one. Um, I forgot to even talk about it, but it got to its target. So <laughs> that's all. It did what it needed to do. Um GBTC, new highs, a little extended, extended on GE Vernova. Yes, Miguel, thank you. It does have an app, um, a, a pretty good app. So uh, there, there's going to be some friction this week. So please be patient because I'm going to be trying to still set up on OBS to, to record so that I can post to YouTube and I'm also going to be running the meetings on both I'm not sure if Glenn Glenn might only do discord we want my, he, I'm not I'll see if I can't get him on both but um, we're gonna be running uh, simultaneously so that you can join from circle or if anyone's still coming from discord so anyway Uh, we're also looking to re-implement text alerts for the trade alerts. What's going to happen is uh, I'm, I, I've been using a, a MailChimp for the trade alerts. I'm going to stop. I'm only going to post them. When I post them, they send an e alert. And we'll we'll go. We'll, there'll be a video that talks about notifications and how you can control them. Like, you may not like. You may only want emails when trade alerts come, and not anything else, right? Or else you'll get inundated with emails. But I am gonna send texts, so it'll be 
it'll be on the it'll be on the uh, it'll email you but from circle it'll post on circle and then we'll also do a maybe it'll be both and maybe it'll, I don't know I don't want to I don't want to have redundancy so I think it'll just be a text from from the other side um, all right Steven see you Monday okay let's keep going Google I think you could still be in Google Google may, Google may have some movement left it did hit this resistance pretty hard and fast it could be pulling back we'll see um, Goldman waiting for a pullback Home Depot Home Depot could be breaking out here where's our Heiken oh oh sorry earnings I heard one of the Home Depot owners or founders died that's sad but he was 95 so I'm sure he had a good life uh, let's keep going Robin Hood waiting IBM Mm, I would actually maybe consider this viable again. I've got this consolidation. We broke out of it. Maybe I would have liked it to have gotten above the 50. If I get a higher low, I would still think about IBM. IWM overextended, a lot of strength in the small caps, JCI. Just got to wait for it now. Um, KKR is another one that we uh, caught a nice little piece of right here. Got to its target. I would expect you're probably out of it. If you're in some, maybe a piece. See if it's got a little bit of legs. It could. It could. Anyone still got a piece of that? MasterCard. Still got some momentum. McDonald's. If it breaks 300 the onion crisis is over. Meta. Yeah, I think Meta's got some ability. I think it might break 600. We'll see. Um, there's another flaggish pattern on Morgan Stanley. Not a lot of setups yet. Apple, Google, KKR, McDonald's, and Walmart. Yeah, that's a good lineup. That's a good lineup. Um, I've, I've pretty much had those same pieces. No Mickey Donalds. Closed my KKR. Ten more. I <laughs> just need a bunch more of those. We just, we just need it like, uh, just give us four or five more PLTRs so that we can just trade over and over like that. And we won't make any complaints. We'll just be in our corner over here. Um, NDAQ. I think we got a good list, but I think we could have a better list. I think... I think right now I'd have I'd be willing to have up to like a hundred stocks <laughs> across across five sectors plus plus some one offs here and there plus some ETFs. I'm, I'd be willing to have a, a upwards of a hundred. I, I, I sometimes um, sometimes people you know are like oh I only want fifteen. You limit your opportunities. We can get through a hundred stocks if I wasn't yapping. I could get through it in ten minutes, no problem, right? Uh, Netflix, overextended, NVIDIA. Okay, we need to keep our eye on NVIDIA on the next pullback for a big move. Why? Because it's being added to the Dow, right? Which means that all the Dow tracking ETFs and stocks are going to have to move it into their portfolios. Um. Even if they do it slowly, that's going to add additional buying pressure to NVIDIA. So lately, I've actually been until until that announcement and even even starting here. Um, did anybody catch NVIDIA on this one? Um, I've been trading TSM, but switched gears because and and going forward, NVIDIA is more favored. I still think it may have a little bit on this next pullback. That next wave is its pre-Dow, you know, initiation. So let's flag this for additional focus. Yeah. PayPal still has some legs. The Q's, what a great move. Small caps and technology just smashed their way to the front. That's so bullish for us. Utilities, no, not yet. So far, very strong. So, yeah, I got to tell you, I'm thinking about a, uh, well, they announced it, but they, but it, it's, 
here's the thing about it, Clint, is you got to think every single like DIA, right? They 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 have to now all these stocks that mimic the Dow, all these funds, all these e, right, all these different um, Fidelity Dow funds, Vanguard Dow, all the funds that are in these different that are made up of it. Once it's announced, now they have to go and realign. And as they realign in order to, to get it to the mix, it has a certain mix of the Dow, right? It is now a percentage and now all these stock, all these funds have to buy the stock in order to get it to that mix in their portfolio. That, that puts pressure over the next few months in addition to what was already there. Tesla still strong as can be. TSM hitting some resistance, but I would definitely be a will willing to trade into it on the next pullback. TTD, I don't know what to make of all that. A lot of volatility there. The dollar still strong, chopping around. That's gonna. The longer that stays up, though, that's gonna put some stress on the market. Let's just be aware of that. Right now, everything positive is is better. Um, yes. Great summary. It's now been announced as a Dow component. Like it's in it. It's now a 30, right? But everybody now who mimics it has to restructure their portfolio in order to integrate it on a physical basis, right? And, and so, yeah, great summary. I probably wasn't saying that right. It's Sunday. Give me a, give me a, give me some grace. Walmart looks fine. I told you this chart, this trend actually guided me on the trade. That's it. The top of this trend as it intersects with this being November expiration, right? There's November expirations. If we are there, I'm at max gain. Max gain. I'll wait for it. I'm going to be patient. As long as it doesn't do something nasty. And I, again... We just saw the market move into a, a six, seven, six point two five. I, I feel th that doesn't mean it's not. I'm not like, oh, that could never happen. Of course, it could happen. <laughs> Am I in it? Yeah. So we got in this back here, Shibango, um, on a bull call spread, and that bull call spread is an eighty two eighty five. 82.85, so like that, right? And so essentially max gain is anything above this. Anything above here is profitable. So as long as we stay above that level right there and we get to expiration, we'll make money. If we stay above that top line right there, we'll have max gain. Getting in now, whew, that's a tough one because you can kind of see, right? We just had... Six days here, the stochastics is a little iffy. Like that's actually one of the things that has me a bit concerned is I'm like, I don't love that stochastics. But my thought is, is that it could just sort of like turn sideways, grind like this, where it kind of goes like this and then pops at the end. That, that actually, if I see that right here, that works perfectly. However, if I described that to you, Press, and said, do you want to trade that? You'd be like, not really. That doesn't look that, that great. If it expires between the strikes, is it a problem? No. Uh, if, it expires, if it expires between the uh, strikes, the, the 85 strike that I sold will expire worthless, and I still own the 82, which is only now intrinsic value. Um, I think I paid a buck... 12 somewhere around a dollar a little above a dollar so i believe as long as it's above 83 anything above 83 i make money that's something along those lines you know what i can show you sorry i'm going over again today guys section six record keeping make sure you have a log there okay um, break even is at 83.19. We're at here. 
Um, we still have almost 300 on the table. That's why I'm going to stay in a little longer. Um, but there's not, yeah, we're, we're kind of in the tail end of this thing. Okay, let me finish the watch list. We'll have plenty to talk about. Here's the XLs. XLB, iffy. XLC, strong as can be. Let's find some more. Energy. A little bit of a pop in energy, interestingly. Financials, strong. We have a good we have a good list there, but we could maybe find a few more. Industrials, we have decent lists. We need more industrials. We need more communication services, more technology, because look at how much strength we have across those. Uh, can you comment on a bull call that expires between the strikes? No matter what, if you if it expires between the strikes, you're actually gonna um, you're gonna have an automatic exercise because the call that you sold will expire worthless. The call that you own is now in the money and in the money options on expiration. The broker will auto exercise you anything a penny in the money. It used to be a quarter. Basically, if it has any intrinsic value, your broker is going to buy the stock. So no matter what, I don't want to let it actually go to expiration. I want to sell. In that situation, I'm basically just selling what I own, right? The, the, uh, I'm selling that spread. The, the, the short calls is worthless. So it's just the intrinsic value of the long call. And I'm just going to close it out at that point at expiration. Sorry if I didn't get to that sooner, my friend. Um, but yeah, that, that one is uh, easier than a credit spread between, between the strikes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if you have a credit spread between the strikes, the option you bought is worthless, does nothing for you. The option you sold is in the money and is now going to exercise you and you're going to have some obligation. So either way with spreads, my advice is let's close those things down at expiration and not let them go all the way through. Okay. Uh, XLU, a little bit of momentum in the utilities, but nothing that it's worth talking about for trading. Same thing with healthcare. Where's the momentum? It's in our growth sectors, right? It's in, it's in, um, it's in consumer discretionary, technology, financial, industrial, communication services. Um, it's There's a lot of strength there. Okay, 10 minutes over. Uh, don't forget to do your trading log. If you don't do your log, you won't get your, your automated dashboard with all the record keeping. And that's when we do our analytics. Um, and analytics is what allows us to set goals and improve aspects of our trading. That's what we're working on is now the, the get the record keeping in place. We'll talk about that on uh, Tuesday as well. It's great to see everybody. Thanks for giving me a little bit of extra time. I appreciate you. Make sure you're popping into Circle, starting to play with it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Oh, sorry. Uh, tomorrow, we don't have... I need to send an alert out or an announcement out. We don't have... It's it's Veterans Day. There's no market. Um, I think the market's closed, isn't it? Now I'm forgetting. Um, yeah, it's closed. Of course it is. It's Veterans Day. Market holidays, 2024. Oh, wait a second. No, it's open. Why did I think it was going to be closed? Is anything closed tomorrow? The bond markets? I'm just getting a double check. It's a federal holiday, so let's see. Oh no. Stock market stays open. Banks are closed. It didn't say about the bonds. All right. That's my bad. No, everything's as usual. Banks and bonds. Okay, Miguel said it is bonds. It is bonds. 
Sorry, Graylin already said it too. I didn't see the chat. Everyone's telling me. You guys all know and I don't. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, <laughs> happy trading.